Hey everybody and welcome to another Cricut Craft tutorial. Before we get started, check out my Creative Fabrica Fans page down below. It's a membership where I share two exclusive SVGs and one tutorial a month. It's a really fun place. I take lots of requests for SVGs and things like that, so check it out. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make party or bridal sashes. These can be used for a lot of different events. They're really, really fun and easy to make. This is such a cool way that you can really dress up any occasion. And I made two different styles. So I made one with holographic, and then I used a regular StarCraft Softflex HTV on this one. Both of these sashes are from Amazon, but you can make these yourself by just getting some wide satin ribbon and either sewing or gluing the base down here so that it becomes a sash. You could also use a pin if you don't want to glue or sew. This is such a fun thing that you guys can do, and these are great for birthdays, bridal showers, bridal parties, I mean all sorts of fun things. Bachelorette parties are great for these too. And again, they're so easy to make. So I'm gonna show you guys how simple this really is to do and you don't need to be afraid of melting your sash. Let's get started. Whatever we would do, we do it just for fun. To make these adorable sashes, which is so easy, we are going to start in the Cricut Design Space application here. And we're gonna use a couple text items because we're gonna do two different sashes. We have a pink one that's going to be bridesmaid. And then we also have the white one that will be bride. So we're gonna take the bridesmaid one first. And you can pretty much use any font that you want. I'm gonna go ahead and look at my system fonts. I know I have a lot of really fun fonts that would look great for this. So I like to use a script font because I like them to look a little bit girly. Um, I think it just gives it a little pop. And I just think they look really nice. So what we're going to do is take a look and see if we like this one. I think this one's really pretty. And when I make it long enough for how long I want to make it, which is about, um, I don't want to go any longer than about 15 inches. It won't be too wide. But this one's kind of weird. So Cricut Design Space kerns your fonts now. But do you see like the B and the way it's kind of connected to the R and the E and the S? I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is ungroup them. And I'm going to grab all these through five letters and I'm going to scoot this over. I just don't love the way that's connected. I just think it looks a little bit funny. You can reconnect them how you want to do it just by kind of grabbing them all and moving them over. So same with this B. Like I don't even want the B connected necessarily. It doesn't need to be. Or you can just connect it like that. It's really up to you. But I just don't love how they had that done. So I'm going to go ahead and weld this. And let's see if we like it. I like to look at it once it's welded just to see if it looks kind of weird. Um, I don't know if I love it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this one to the side and I'm going to just type bridesmaid again. And we're going to go ahead and look at this in another font and see if we like that better. So I'm just going to scoot this over. And you can do this for a bunch of them. Just find whatever font you like best. This is a great way to compare fonts. Or you can always just go to wordmark.it to take a look at your fonts as well. So Christmas time is usually a really pretty font and I like that, but it's gonna be really tall, I think, for what we want. So let me go ahead and kind of size it down and just see if we like that. I don't think I like it. So let's go ahead and find a font and we'll come right back. I found a font that I like, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this one. This is Hello Bluebird script and I will link this down below for you guys, but I like the way that all the letters connect. I like the little hearts on top of the eyes. So I think this is perfect. Now, like I said, I don't want to go a whole lot bigger than about 15 inches. So I think 15.25 is about right. And for the pink sashes, we can't go any taller than four inches. So 3.3 is a great height and width for this. So let's go ahead and just weld these. And I think that one looks really good. We're cutting this one on Caesar Easy Weed in white. So I'm going to go ahead and just change the color to white so I remember what that's being cut on. Let's slide this over to the side because the next one that we're going to do is Bride. Now, you can do the same font if you would like to, if you want to keep them a little bit more, um, you know, uniform. Or you can do future misses. If you want this to take up more space on your sash, I would add the word like future, which I can't spell apparently, future. Or you could just kind of do whatever you wanted to, or like future misses, whatever her name is going to be. You can kind of play around with it and see if you like it. So if that was something you wanted to do, let's say we want to do future Mrs. Blackstone, you can do something like that. And we'll go ahead and make this again. You don't really want to go a whole lot bigger than 15 inches, but I will say that this is a little bit thin because this 
uh, sash can go to about three and a half. It's a little bit smaller than the pink one. So I don't know if I love that, but again, we're just going to play with it. So let me go ahead and play with the fonts and see what I like. I think I've decided on the saying bride to be, and I think that we're going to make this a little bit bigger. Again, I can't go any bigger than about three and a half. So I think that's pretty good because we can add some like zhuzhing to this to make it a little prettier. So what we can do is I'm going to go into images and let's see if in, if they have a ring image that we can use that would be really cute to go with this. Um, I want it to be in two parts. So like something like this really won't work because I have gold and silver holographic um, HTV to use for this. So let's see if we can find a ring that's maybe in two parts that will work for what we want. I wasn't really finding what I wanted in the Cricut Design Space, so I'm just going to go over to Google and I'm going to search Wedding Ring SVG and see if we find anything that might be more so what I'm trying to do. Um, I want, like I said, I want the diamond to be a separate part from the ring itself. So something kind of like this one would actually be pretty much what I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and click Save Image. And I don't think I have a wedding folder in my Cricut design space. Um, I might, but I don't think that I do. I have water slide. All right, so I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to title it wedding. So I'm just going to go folder and call it wedding. And that's where I want to save my ring to. So I'm just going to call this ring and perfect. Let's go back over to Cricut design space. So over in Cricut design space, click upload, click upload image and then browse. And we're going to find where we saved our image. So we know we saved it into our wedding folder and it is called ring. Now what I want to do is I'm going to change this to um, simple because that'll usually change all those little squares just to plain and click continue. Now I'm going to use the advanced options and I'm going to change this to 100 under color tolerance and that'll just help it get a smoother edge when you take away the background. Now when you look at the preview, you're going to have nice smooth edges. I'm going to click continue and save it as a cut image and upload it. I'm going to take this image and insert it into my Cricut design space. Now I need to definitely size it down because it's really, really big and we don't want it to be huge compared to the bride to be part. And I'm going to go ahead and make this real big, a lot bigger. Let's see. Again, we do have size restrictions um, based on the uh, design that we're using. So what I'm going to do is just double check that this doesn't go super big. That looks pretty good. So what we need to do is actually separate the ring. So I'm going to duplicate my ring and I'm going to click on the word contour. The first contour I'll get rid of is the big ring portion and that should just leave us with the top diamond part. I'm going to do the top diamond part in silver. So I'm just going to change it to a light gray. Then I'm going to select the black ring here and click contour again. This time we're going to get rid of all the parts of the diamond by just clicking on them to remove them. Then this part is going to be gold, so I'll just change it to kind of a gold color. Go ahead and put this back down here. And then we're going to do the bride to be part also in that silver in the gold. I think it'll look really pretty. So what I'm going to do is weld this and then I'm going to change this to the gold color as well. I think those both look pretty good. Now these both are pretty long, so when we go to make them, they are going to need to be cut on the longer mats. So what I'm going to do is click make it, and I'm using my maker three, so it's going to ask us if we need to cut on mat, which for these we do. I'm just going to go ahead and select on mat and click done. Now it's going to show us that we need to use our extra long mat here because this one's almost 16 inches. Then we have our little diamond, which is really small. And then we have our gold portion, which is just about 13 inches long. And then we have the ring up here. So let's go over to the machine and I'm going to show you guys how to do this. But remember, we're cutting on HTV. So you'll want to make sure that you mirror your image. You have to do this for each mat that you're using. So you want to go through and mirror each of your mats to make sure that everything is correct. Now, typically I like to flip it on my canvas, but I wanted to show you since we're cutting several colors that you do have to mirror each individual mat. So all you need to do is select each mat and down at the bottom, click the little green mirror option. So let's head over to the machine. I have my large mat here and then I always keep my plastic protector on it just to be safe. That keeps it clean. And we're starting with our white, which is cut on everyday iron on. 
So what you'll do is you want to note which side is your carrier sheet side. So this side here is my carrier sheet side. So what I do is I actually take, if I'm working with a long piece, and I lay it across my um, machine, and then I just lay part of it down. That way I'm trying not to lay like all of the whole sheet down. And if I get it really uneven, it's a lot easier to just peel up the small part that I'm working with versus this whole long piece. Get that all laid out. And you just want to make sure it's pressed down well. And then we're going to go ahead and load our machine. I'll pull the machine in for you. And again, this is the Maker 3, so it's a little bit different. So it's going to pull my mat all the way in to measure it. And then it will ask me to press the little go button, and then it will check my tool. So we have our two sashes. These are both made of satin. Um, satin is just a polyester. So I will say um, these are made to withstand pretty high heat. A lot of people worry that they're gonna melt or burn satin. You're not. It's really made to withstand pretty high heat. So I will say that I'm gonna link both of these down below, but I think the pink one is a better quality than the white one. So that's just something to keep in mind. So what I'm gonna do is lay these out. So it's gonna kinda depend on how you want them worn as to which direction you're gonna put these. So what I do is I find where the seam is for the bottom, which the bottom seam is right down here. And sometimes it helps if you try it on yourself just to make sure that you have it the way you want it to go um, because they're a little bit finicky. So you'll maybe need to like test it out. Okay, so I put it on really quick. And all I did was I just sort of dropped the bridesmaid onto it so I knew which direction I wanted it to go. Um, because this one does have a seam here um, at the bottom. So it, like I said, I just sort of dropped it on there. It's not actually where it's going to go. But it gives me an idea of which direction. So this one's set up the same way where it has the seam. So I'm going to flip it so that the seam is the same way. Because we're going to put the bride-to-be on this one. And again, these are not exactly where they're going to sit. It's just sort of setting them on there just to kind of get an idea. So that's pretty good. The reason that I didn't make it the full length of the sash was because if you do that, it's going to look a little bit weird when the girls put it on. You need to take into account, you know, um, chest and things like that when you put these on. So you kind of leave a little bit of leeway for that. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is, let's see, just lay this out. Now I ended up cutting this with Starcraft um, Starflex because I didn't have a long enough piece of the Caesar Easy Weed. So we're gonna just lay that down. Looks really good. Looks nice and flat. Looks even, perfect, I think. Yep, that looks pretty good. So then we're gonna go ahead and adjust the bride to be one. And we have the little uh, ring there. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust where we want this one. Now this one isn't as sticky. So we may need to put a little heat tape because satin, this, this is not, like I said, I would definitely not purchase this sash again. I would purchase this version in the white. Um, I just didn't for some reason. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So we're going to need to press this one with two separate presses because we need to layer the um, little top part on our ring. But I think that looks pretty good and even. I'm going to press the pink one first. Starcraft Softflex presses at 285 for about 8 to 10 seconds, and then the Holographic presses at 320 for about 10 to 15 seconds, and this is a cold peel, this is a warm peel. So I'm going to get our heat press all set up, and then we can press them. So again, this is Starcraft Softflex. So it presses at 285 for about 8 to 10 seconds. I have it set diagonally because it's longer than 12 and it's it's just a big piece and if I put it this direction it didn't quite fit so diagonal worked a lot better so you can do that if you need to if stuff isn't fitting real good you can do a diagonal and this press is at a medium pressure I don't have a pressing pillow under this because I don't have a big enough one but you could use like a towel or something but I just turn my pressure way up and then we're just gonna go ahead and press Again, this press is at just a medium setting, so even just pressing like this is fine. I have my timer set to about 17 seconds, so I'm just going to go ahead and pull this up. 
And this is a warm peel, so you can go ahead and just peel this off right away. And you can always come back through and press out like the wrinkles on the ends if you want to, but most of the time they'll just work their way out. So I'm gonna reset our heat press, um, which is real easy to do. All you have to do is press the set button here and you're gonna turn this up to 320 degrees. And hit set again, and I have it set to 18 seconds, so I'm just gonna hit set again set again and set again and we'll let this warm back up to 320 and then we can press our other piece. We're ready to press this one so again the heat press is set to 320. Now this one is done in layers because we have the silver layer so what I'm going to do is press this first layer for probably about seven seconds or so then I have to let it completely cool then I can peel the carrier sheet and then we can do a full press. So we're just going to go ahead and press this one. This press is at a higher pressure, so I did turn the pressure up by using this little knob on my heat press. And like I said, I'm gonna press this first layer for about 10 seconds. Um, you don't wanna go too much, you don't wanna overheat, but we do need to let this cool before we can take it off. So if you're having trouble with getting to cool by your heat press, you can actually just move it over to your table, but it also helps to just kind of touch it with cool fabric. You can get a cooling block, which literally you can just get like a piece of marble at like Home Depot. I also will sometimes use these. They're little cases that I got from the Dollar Tree, but they're magnets, so they're metal, and they cool this down really, really quickly, and I have a bunch of them, so I can literally just kind of switch them out as one gets a little bit warm. I can just change it out for a cooler one, and then you can just sort of cool them up that way. So I'm gonna let this cool for just a minute or so, then I'll peel off our sheet, and then we can go ahead and press the last piece for this one. All right, I've let this cool, so I can go ahead and peel this. You'll still want to go slow, since we didn't do a full press, but you'll see that everything looks like it's stuck pretty well. And we'll go ahead and get the ring part undone here. And then all we have to do is add the little silver piece for our ring. And this one you just want to line up wherever you want to. It's not an exact science here, but you can line it up. I'm going to make sure everything's back on my press. And then I'm going to do a full press on this. Go ahead and lift up your press and we can go ahead and make sure we turn off our heat press and then I'm gonna again let this cool I'm gonna go ahead and let that little piece cool and then I'll peel it off and these are all done our sashes are all done they were really easy to do and like I said a lot of people are afraid of them and they're worried that you're going to scorch them but you're not because this is polyester and polyester is made for sublimation so you could technically sublimate on these if you wanted to but I think these came out really really nice Again, I would probably not buy this white brand. I'll link them down below, but these are a little crunchier feeling and this is much softer. I like the feel of the pink and the pink is actually a little bit longer as well. Even though the measurements on the site said that they were the same, the white one is a little shorter, but I do like the feel of this pink one a lot better and I love how it came out. It's so cute. These are so simple and you can really do anything that you want. They don't have to be bridal sashes. You could use them for birthday parties, events, things like that, retirements. These are really, really fun. And look how pretty that holographic is on there. Isn't that gorgeous? I just think these are so fun and so easy to do. So again, remember these are polyester. I'm gonna show you the package that the pink ones came in because these actually came in a nice package. The blue one or the white ones, they were like vacuum sealed, it was not good. But these are the pink ones. These are Sparkle and Bash. And again, I did get these off of Amazon. I was really, really pleased with them. They were really inexpensive. And I have got to say they are really, really nice and comfortable. I did try these on just so I could make sure that I had everything the way I wanted them to, the direction I wanted them to go. And I just think these were really, really fun. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm always happy to answer those for you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. It is totally free to subscribe, and I would love to have you as part of my crafty family here on YouTube. I hope you guys had so much fun checking out these really cool sashes. Again, these can be used for so many different things that I feel like you could really be very, very creative. I will link, again, everything down below, including the font that I used. I hope you guys have a great day, and happy crafting.